Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Dane from NYYU. We'd like to welcome you to the Yankees Farm Draft Special with Bobby Malone. Bobby, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well. How are you guys doing? Good. And we have special guest Nick Simmons back. Nick is our IFA guy. How are you doing, bud? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me well, on again. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk some draft baseball. Excited about it. Now, Bobby, we know since 2019... The Yankees have redeveloped their draft strategy, and Nick can talk about the scouting differences and all that. Um, what is it the Yankees have changed so much in the past five years that has made them more successful now than they were for the last 15 or 20? Yeah, I mean, since I think when they came in 2019, it was after the 2018 season, they just uh, changed scouting. Now, the, the same common denominator is Damon. Oppenheimer has been here since probably in 1997, 98. I know he started mm -hmm. very early in the organization. So he's been here for a, a, a while. And um, what they started to do is just overall bet better uh, analytics, metrics, and a certain model that they're following. So their, right. their model is totally uh, been revamped since 2019 and, it's showing in the people they're drafting. In 19, it was Volpe. 20 was Wells. 21, it was Sweeney, Jones. And then last year with Lombard. So they're just doing a better job. It's It's been cornered now by the two shortstops. Uh, but they're just they're just looking. Um, it's been more pitcher, pitcher uh, heavy. So they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, um, I was saying this, you know, out of 20 rounds. They could be drafting anywhere between 10 to 13 pitchers. Right. And a lot of that is due to because of what's going on in the international free agent market. Right. So they're doing a great job in bringing in young talent overseas that are mostly hitters. I'm not saying they're right. not getting arms. They are getting arms. But uh, it's it's kind of compensating. You know, a cop, you know, what they're doing is by bringing in the the, the mostly college pitchers, too. They're, they're, right. they're scouting uh, it, when it comes to the high school level, last year they did draft some uh, high school kids, one kid out of Puerto Rico, and then I think two other kids in rounds 10 through 20. So they are being a little maybe more aggressive in the high school market, but it's still, you know, if anybody who, you know, who's new to the draft or doesn't really how to understand the draft work, you know, works is rounds one through 10 are built on a, on a level level system of money right so you have right. so much to spend and then after that i think max this year is still a hundred and fifty thousand dollars now you could add more to that but it's coming out of your pot and you do have i think an overture of five five percent so they have a little extra yeah. money to spend so you could play you could play like a monopoly game on how you do it you know what i mean you could right. play it by you know there are certain teams that might go really cheap and get an overreach talent, save that money and get more, uh, more meat, let's say in rounds four five and six. So where that kind of like, kind of like what we saw the Rangers do with Kamar rocker at the very beginning Absolutely. of the first round. And then they got, yeah. The Yankees don't really follow that game last year, right up to the, tr right up to the draft. There were rumors where the Yankees would go. So quote unquote, go crazy meaning that they would just draft kids, pay them, you know, the high salary or high uh, signing bonuses, and then face the consequences next year where they lose. Right. Um, that's been put out there a few times. It just never has happened. No, I've never seen it. You know, and no team has done it. So I don't expect, I mean, it's been a very quiet, um, when it comes to the Yankees for this year's draft, it's been very quiet. Like, crazy quiet to the point that I don't think anybody has a real good gauge on what they're doing this year. I think the, 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 from what I'm hearing from the, you know, the various uh, people I uh, DM around baseball uh, that are in the draft world, uh, I've made my, I kind of made a name for myself <laughs> and that's silly. Yeah, way. you sure have. You know, it's kind of silly and they do kind of trust me is that nobody really has uh, an idea of which way the Yankees are going to. I have kind of kind of common sense guesses, um, right? But yeah, it looks like this year could be all over the map. Nick, 
Yeah, I mean, I I, I kind of agree with Bobby, man. From the from the most part, I mean, they kind of do a good job of of identifying a hitter that they like very early and then going along the lines of just getting more pitching later on in the draft. I wouldn't say it's like uh, totally with uh, IFA. I think New York and, and a lot of the teams, they spend early on uh, position players because they're just easier to see uh, than it is when you come to uh, pitching and you usually get pitching when they're already available or, you know, let's say they're a year away uh, for a kid that we just lost, like Kevin DeFrank, who's supposed to was supposed to be in next year's class. We just lost him to Marlins because um, just the money goes crazy when a kid's 16 throwing 95. It just isn't. It's rare. But um. You know, in this situation, man, I, I would like to know, you know, Bobby, from your standpoint, do you see the Yankees going maybe high school uh, hitter or do you see them going college hitter? Well, I think it's it's going to be one. It's, it's going to be rounds one or two. So you're going to get a you're going to get one of each, I think. Now, I, there's been a lot of uh, chatter that they may get a high school pitcher. I know that there are a number of high school pitchers. um you know, as I'm looking over here from my stuff on my list that I have over, William Schmidt was a name that was dropped today by one of the mocks. Um, but they're also been talking very heavily uh, about uh, Braylon um, Doherty out of California. Yeah. Those are the two, the really like the two kind of high school pitchers. But I think that's more of a smokescreen. I think they're going hitter and hitter. I think it's either my guess, it's college hitter first round, and there's just literally I, I was before this we started the show thinking there's about seven or eight uh, uh high school hitters that could be there at 50 uh, pick 53 okay so it it's now it it's you know it's is do we, do we do a reach in the first round with a high school hitter right and then in the second round i mean if it, it wouldn't shock me if they go high school high school I, i'm gonna be honest this is like the first wow. year i have ever said that but it could be. I mean, uh, I, I have mentioned before the name uh, Luke Dickerson from New Jersey. He is a, a prospect that they are really heavy and high on. I and my last mock will which will come out probably tomorrow um, right. is going to have him in the second round as their second round selection. I have a feeling that they could have possibly cut some kind of pre-draft deal in terms of you know we'll offer you this. Will you sign for this? Um, Dante Nori out of Michigan is another one that I know they're very high on. And then the third high school kid is Griffin uh, Burkholder from Virginia. Those three, those three names have been mentioned pretty much all spring. Oh, and, and what I mean by all spring, that's the other thing that everybody you guys know is that high school baseball season is crazy, especially Absolutely. in the Northeast, or like those three are all in cold weather states. So it's they have played between 25 and 35 games. So it, it's really it's a really, you know, dicey thing on how they feel those uh, those kids would but will be. But uh, Luke Dickerson is somebody that I know. I know for a fact that they are very high on. Um, okay. Does he last to pick 53? I don't know. Do they jump at pick 26 to get him? I don't know. Now. There's a switch pitcher from Mississippi State. Good luck on I, – I can't pronounce the name either. Gerangelo, but, Gerangelo, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Now, I've heard that there's some mutual interest between those two parties. Does he last that long? Would the Yankees ta invest in a I, – I mean, that's a – the kid's 95 to 97 with the right arm, a little higher with the left, big pitch selection. I mean, if he's there, that might not be a bad pitcher for to grab. I think he was there. I think there's a very good possibility they draft him. Good. Because, I mean, I, he, he, you know, as I've said in the past, the Yankees like to draft from schools that they know that the coaching and their development is sound, that they feel comfortable drafting the players. Uh, every pick that I have on my top five mock is from schools that they have solid relationship with there, except for the high school. Four out of the five are places where they have solid relationship with their coaching and how the development has been taking place. So, yes, I mean, Mississippi State, if they don't draft that kid, I think Cal uh, Stevens is somebody that they would love. I, I mean, that's who I have. I have him in the third round. I think that if that's if he lasts in the third round. I think to me, I, I have watched 
I could say enough of Mississippi State this year because I've been yeah. watching pretty much every one of Steven's start and uh, watched some of Gerangelo's starts. Um, I think I think Steven is just could be like another Drew Thor. That's just the really? kind of thing they have. Yeah, I don't think oh. he's I don't think he's crazy uh, ninety seven plus, but I think he's been a solid ninety two to ninety six pounds out zone is a sinkable kind of pitcher. Gerangelo is, is is a lot if they they said they compared him to Strowman, and I would agree that would be a very good comp. From the right side, what about from the left side? I don't think he's going to be pitching from the left side. Really? Yeah, I don't think I think the the switch thing is going to be once he becomes a a, um, a major league pitcher. I, mm-hmm. I mean, if he was a relief pitcher, they could they could keep it up. But they're saying that uh, everything that, you know, is more sound through the right side than the left side, even though the velocity from the left side is supposed to be pretty high. It's yeah. just, gonna, you know, it's just going to be hard to, you know, what are you going to pitch him every other day? You know what I mean? As a starter, it's just like, you know, how the, I think, I think a, a club will have him focused on, on one particular arm. And I think it's going to be the right arm. Okay. Nick, go ahead. Yeah. I got a couple uh uh, three guys I want to go over. Uh, what about uh, so we'll start with uh, Tommy White. Uh, I know yeah. that's somebody that's been you know linked to the Yankees as well. You got Tommy White. Uh, there's a kid in the second round I like. His name is Bryce Cunningham, uh, from yeah. Vanderbilt. He's a pitcher. Um, I, do you see interest there? And then the last one would be I, I mentioned this kid back in January to Dane and Carlos, but uh, Carter Johnson. I just feel like he's been consistent throughout his whole high school career. And he's steadily on mock somewhere between 30 and 40. You know, is that somebody that could be a smoke you screen know, kind of grab? Every single person you just mentioned, I have I have written a report on. <laughs> Everyone. Okay. So in my final draft, I have them picking um Tommy White uh, out of LSU as their f- first round pick in, in 26. I think that, and I put out a tweet today, look around Major League Baseball right now. Look around infielders. Look at third baseman. There is no power. There's no really power in the game. Uh, Tommy White has always hit. He's hit in high school, hit at uh, North Carolina State, and he has hit in LSU, won a national championship. The Yankees love LSU. They have draft they players do. from LSU. Since Josh Smith, you know, they just know the program. Um, they, they trust what's going on there. And from what I've been – Hearing, you know, uh, the coaches love Tommy White. They love his plate discipline. They love that he could hit for power. He could hit for average. He makes adjustments. The number one thing, and I've talked to Dane about this, that people are shying away with, can he play third base, right? He's got the arm. Does he have the range? Now, my comp on him would be, you know, when I hate people hear his name, they're going to get scared, but Josh Donaldson, but from like 10 years ago. Like when he was with oh. the when he was with the A's and then he went, yeah when he was with the A's and then he went to the uh, to the Jays he's about the same size six one six two about two twenty two twenty five the arm is there I don't know if the lateral movement is there could he play third base I think he's going to be playing third base right because you know it, it's just you, you you put him into position until he fails I don't think he will fail at third base I think where the, where the metric is going to be is the lateral right. And right. that's going to throw him off. But can he pick it on a daily basis? He only made seven errors this year for LSU. So they trust him there. They could have DH him, right? NC State DH'd him his freshman year. Goes to LSU. He has a shoulder injury. Still sticks it out. He made 13 errors. They still won a national championship, right, at third base. This year, makes seven errors. Uh, and did a lot of focusing on defense. So he is my top pick. Now, the other two... Cunningham comes from uh, Vandy, uh, a place that, um, you know, that the Yankees have also scouted very, you know, heavy. Spencer Jones is from there. Um, There's a very good possibility that, you know, I don't know about the second round pick, but if he's there in the third round, Stevens, you know, from Mississippi State or Cunningham could be the pick. It's like either or. Uh, he, He made one of my mocks back in April. Mm-hmm. And so he 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 was doing well and then kind of maybe plateaued. And then lastly, you met a Carter, Carter Johnson. Um, they have scouted Alabama. I brought up the story a few years, you know, when they drafted Volpe. You know, if they if they didn't, if Volpe was going to go to college, they would have drafted Gunnar Henderson. 
That was the, yeah. that was like one of he was in their realm of players they drafted. Once they got him, they didn't were they're not gonna go draft two back-to-back shortstops, high school shortstops. Uh unfortunately, because they could have played him, you know, at third base, but whatever. Um Carter Johnson is definitely everything that you read now. I haven't seen him, of course. The limited videos and reports on him is that he is in the Gunnar Henderson kind of mold. He's going to hit. Uh, he has a good swing, short, compact swing. And then I don't even think there's a question about him playing shortstop. Um, Not from what I've seen, no. Yeah, I don't think he makes it to 52. That's the thing. So they pass on him, passing him on 26. He's going to be gobbled up probably by the comp picks. Now, one thing that I'm noticing in a trend is that very similarly to Cashman in like draft de- or he deals with a set of GMs that he goes back to over and over. You see him go to Pittsburgh, Chicago, the Dodgers. It's it seems like they're doing that in the draft with schools as well. They're going back to the same schools where they trust, where they know the program, where they can get that. Is that something that holds true as you go further down the draft? Or is that yeah. it's quite it's quite it's quite amazing. Like if you look and what I do is I, I mean, if I don't know if you guys have BA baseball America, you could yeah, go I through. Do. I mean, even if you could get it, you can get it for free. If you go to baseball for reference, but you could see, you know, their model from 19 to now. And it scarily shows you regions and schools. So mm-hmm. their, their regions, it's, it is, is quite interesting because they're all over, all over the country. They're in, you know, of course, the cop, the Cape Cod League is where their bread and butter is. Nobody right. scouts scouts the Cape Cod League better than the Yankees. No, they no. have been doing this. This has been like where they make their calls on players. So, but in in terms of regions, the Northeast, you know, they have, you know, uh, Ben Rice is from that area, right? And mm-hmm. and we we see some other picks in, from Northeastern. Uh, in the past few years, and I think even Harvard, I, I'm, I might be wrong, but they do that, right? And of course, mm-hmm. Volpe and uh, uh, and so so that's the Northeast. But then it's they're really big in the SEC, and they're big on the West Coast. Damon Oppenheimer still has a lot of connections in California. Um, that's how they got uh, Drew Thorpe and Bryce Warrecker. Yep, yeah, yeah. The past couple of years. So they 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 draft out in the West Coast. Stanford used to be a hot ground for them as well. So you know those are the places where they they like to draft. Um, the Upper North, Upper Midwest. I don't. I, I can't think of somewhere. Uh, they did draft the Trey Sweeney, but I think the Trey Sweeney draft uh, pick was a lot because of um, the metrics where he went right. to that you know workout and blew people away, and he was going to get picked. So they just figured. Go get him. Yeah. Sweeney was, you know, he didn't turn out to be the player we thought he was, but that was kind of a uh, foretelling of their, what their draft strategy was. They were looking for those exit velocities, the mm-hmm. barrel percentage and Sweeney fit that mold. But now moving down a little bit further in the draft, you think, I know your pitcher heavy. They have been, what do you, do you have names? Yeah, I think I mean I'm looking at mine right over here of where I I could see the names and stuff. So um, I have in the third round I have Cal Stevens, um, but in in rounds four and five I have two places where the the Yankees have gone before Brian Holiday out of Oklahoma State. He is uh, on the smaller side. He's under six feet, uh, six foot tall. Um, but he he was on the Cape for two straight years. Did very well in the Cape, right? So this is somebody that, even though may not have the size, definitely has the ability to do, you know, some good things. If you recall a couple of weeks ago, he was in the um, Super Regionals, and I think he pitched like 135 pitches. Yeah. Um, he's just, he's a four-pitch pitcher. Uh, a lot of places have him going, you know, seventh, um, a sixth, an eighth round. I think, I think just teams are just going to say, you know what? doesn't really matter if you like the kid you're going to draft right right uh, so i have him uh, and then in rounds five i have jacob right out of cal poly that's the school like i mentioned with thorpe and war record um, yeah and ryan gallagher um and jackson kent are two other names there are jackson kent is from arizona uh and ryan gallagher is from uh santa barbara 
those are also two names that would fit the Yankees model in terms of uh, how they draft. You know, those are places where they like uh, players and especially pitchers. Nick, go ahead. Yeah, I got a quick question. So, I mean, you mentioned Cal Poly. I was going to ask this question followed up. Like, Mm -hmm. I know the Yankees are very big on them. They grab pitchers out of there almost every single year. But why are they not digging deep into uh, Wake Forest? You know, Wake Forest is now becoming the cream of the crop. So why are they not looking there? You know, you know, I was just telling Dana and I were talking the other night and, and that was something we brought up. I am shocked. I don't know what the reason is. They have some of the best. They do have like a professional pitching lab there. At, Cal- yeah. at uh, Wake Forest, uh, I I don't know. Um, uh, I it could be just a different kind of philosophy. I think with the Yankees' uh, scouting philosophy and how they look is uh, high. What is the R- RPMs right uh, yeah. movements on the fastball? But they also look for um, pitchers who throw the sinker. You know, mm-hmm. and I don't know if you know. I really don't. I'm not deep into the Wake Forest system. In, in terms of pitching philosophy, um, but that that's been a strange one. It, there are some schools that I don't understand why the Yankees don't really draft from. Like I get a lot. I have a friend who's on here, and he's a, a Texas guy. Like they don't just draft from the University of Texas. Like no, I can't you remember. don't ever see it. Right. Uh, Virginia is another one. Like, and Virginia this year has a couple of good players. Uh, Ethan love Anderson. Ethan Anderson. Yeah, yeah, I love him. And and Ethan Anderson was a kid that could have been a first round. He was scheduled to be like a top 20 pick at the beginning of the season. And then he's just fell. But he's the kind of kid. He's the perfect example of a kid who could get drafted, go into a system and just like flourish. Right. So he's just someone that is, um, you know, that could be, you know, uh, drafted by the Yankees. But I don't. And then the other one is Harrison uh, Wicker. What's his name? Um I want to mispronounce his name. It's like uh, Drum Wicker. Uh, he is. Where is he? Um, oh, here it is. Harrison uh, uh, Didowick. He's an. He's he, from. Uh, you know, I. I mentioned my, my friend over here, uh, Virginia Yankee. He's actually a very good source of information. He is. Uh, he, he puts a lot of stuff. In. He put out like a, a couple of tweets on uh, Ditto Worker, and there were scouts who were saying that, you know, he is uh, Spencer Jones light. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's tall, athletic. He's been playing center field. But then you watch, I watched him at the College World Series. I didn't see anything. You know what I mean? So that is somebody you might just take a chance on. But it goes back to what I was saying. There's just some places where the Yankees just don't draft. Now, going back to that Wake Forest thing, I did some checking after we talked the other night, and the general idea that I got was that the Yankees didn't want to go to schools that had that heavy draft lab or the pitching yeah. laboratories. They want to draft from schools that focus on other things so they can mold the pitchers they want that way. That's a, that's a great answer, and that makes total sense, right? You would think you don't want to go to – I mean – uh, you know, you don't want to go to a place where now you're 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 got to remold the player, you know. But right. it, it 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 just it just seems like you know the Yankees used to be that way with Stanford as well. You know, um, they used to draft Stanford arms, and every arm they've drafted was a bust. And then the one that I wanted in the draft, which was Quinn Matthews last year, right? They don't draft him; they draft Kevin uh, Kyle Carr. He is now probably a top ten. Um, Matthews in the St. Louis system. So like, yeah, it, it, it just, it just, it, 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 it you know, it, and I will say something. Um, last year's draft. Now you look back, you look at it now from afar. Um, I don't want to use the word. It's disappointing. So but far. It's not like 19, 20, 21 or 22. No. Right. And, and- it hasn't been very good. I mean, you yeah. haven't gotten the results out of it. Like the year before you got Chase, Drew, uh, all those guys. And this class, yeah, we were expecting big things from Carr, but he just has not been the same guy no. that I thought he was going to be coming into the year. No, I mean, you know, you look at Lombard. I'm like, like Lombard, Carr, I I, I think it's going to fall out of top 
you know, Cade Smith is probably the best one. Mm -hmm. He really is. Hendry Hendry was looking good before he got injured. And then you also have, uh, I think, see, I think Lombard's so young. I feel like, yeah, you know, yeah. you got to still give him a chance. Same thing with Roderick, man. I always tell people the same thing with Roderick Arias, man. Like, it's so young, and, and he's 19, and he really didn't play that much the first two years, and they kept him out of, you know, uh, showcases because he was signed so early. You know, I mean, that's a kid that you got to give a chance, a little bit of a chance, man. He's finally up at A-ball now, and he's playing a whole year. You know, I'm I'm feeling the same way about Lombard, man. Like, I feel like you just got to give them both a chance. I mean, I, I don't look at the high school ones more. I look at the college ones, right? So, I, you know, when I when I see the college ones, I mean, I'm looking at Kate Smith stats. I mean, he is having solid a solid year. There's no doubt about that. But there were some, you know, I just, like I said, expected a little more from the pitching side. And but what's funny though, the person they they um, draft uh, as an undrafted free agent who is Shields pitched today, yeah. and I did another great game. And I understand he's twenty five, but there's like that. What I would say, we don't check IDs on the pitching mound, right? Right. So if he, if he blossoms at 26, 27 years old, who cares? Like he's, yep. you know, a lot of well, the young folks don't remember Ron Guidry didn't come out to the major leagues until he was like 26, 27. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. One of the so, kids from from last year's class, I'm still very, very high on this kid we interviewed, Danny Flat Jr. They found him way late. He's a high he, school, right? Yeah, the high school yeah. kids, yeah. The high school kids I I would never comment on because they're so young, right? Mm -hmm. So they would be entering their sophomore year at college. Right. Right. I mean, Lombard would be going into the sophomore year. So it's kind of hard. What I don't want to say you get, they just did a better job in picking their selection, their college selections, you know, in the, in the past four years than they did last year. I mean, the 19 draft, the 21 draft was really good. Yeah, it was. You know, even the uh, 22 draft. And you know, that 22 draft, you get Jones, you get Chase, you get Drew, you get all those guys. I mean, there's talent there that you're just seeing come out and come out. Uh, Eric Reiselman's another one. Uh, yeah, LSU. Yeah, and then uh, the kid from Gonzaga, the, Tristan Vreeli. Yep. Um, he has looked good from that class. Do you th they kind of had a mold for so many years where they went left-hand hitter and call it from college, and then they went pitcher heavy. Mm -hmm. Is there a left-hand hitter this year that you could see surprising in the first round? You know, and to be honest, I mean, like my top three first round picks, like I, I have a selection. It's so I have um, I have Tommy White. I think the right. other two that are going to consider is Malcolm Moore from Stanford, who's, you know, IQ testing at the the the, the uh, what is it? The workout, the training, the, the combine yeah. was off the charts. I heard that it was over yeah, like 145 it, or something. Yeah, it was crazy. And and the other one is a uh, Kaylin Culpepper from um Kansas City uh Kansas State, uh, who was on the Cape, extremely gifted athlete. I mean, there's there's there are scouts on online who have already said like he could be a gold glove third baseman tonight. You wow. know, uh the question is how does the bat play up, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, I don't know how much pop he's going to have, but then, like, then again, look around Major League Baseball, how much pop is there on the infield? So, if you get like a Gold Glove third baseman and and he's good for twelve to fifteen home runs, I mean, like I said, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't shock me if his name is called. But you know, in terms of other lefties, this draft is, I mean, you know, Blake Burke was somebody from Tennessee that I really, really like as a first baseman. Mm -hmm. Um but my 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 question. This is how I I think. I don't know. If they think the same way. If you see like Ben Rice right now, do you draft uh, draft such a high pick when there may be other needs? Now I know that there's the concept you don't draft for need, right. but there's some there is some areas where the Yankees they need there, there's of need. You know, I mean third base I think is one of them. I still think they're a little light in the outfield. Um, and first base, but I don't know if I would drive first baseman, draft the first baseman that high. Um, Carson D. Martini from Virginia Tech, 
he started my the year as probably like my top guy. And he fell this year. Uh, a lot of strikeouts, walks weren't moving up, and he fell probably to a second or third round pick. Um, okay. But there's a bunch of hitters that they could draft anywhere from round five through 15 that are, are lefty bats that could be something. There's a kid. There's a kid I want to ask you about. I mean, he's uh, listed at like lower, lower, closer to the hundred mark range on MLB.com. Uh, Sawyer Far. You know, he's a six foot five shortstop kid. Uh, kind of like looks a little bit like a Spencer Jones. You know, what what do you feel about that kind of pick, switch hitter? Uh, you know, I really haven't heard not much stuff about Far. To be honest with you, I mean, uh, you know, if it really is, um. You know, uh, he. I think he's an old. I might. I might be wrong, but isn't he like an older high yeah, school? He just turned kid? nineteen. Yeah, yeah. That's the other thing. And you make. You know, you. you I'll parlay with this. This draft is incredibly heavy with old high school kids, and I hate saying the word old high school kids. But there yeah. is, I Dick Dickerson. You mentioned Far just right now. Um, Dante. Uh, uh, how you say his name? Nor, uh, who Nori, who could be uh, the, uh, like I said, mentioned the second round pick. I think it's even getting closer to twenty years old. I think he turns twenty this year. He's already nineteen. So th- there's a lot of nineteen plus year old seniors, high school seniors. The the question, like like I, I'm, you know, I've seen him stuff. The question I, I go back to, and I ask myself when I do these things, right? When was the last time the Yankees drafted a high school kid from from Texas? Right. True. And I hate yeah. I, I could tell you I, and, and Dane will probably will, his eyes will light up. They do. They love Arizona high school kids. And and that's just proven because you <laughs> see them who they've been drafting the few the past uh, five years. And and they now it could be it could be AAU. It could be travel. We don't know. But Florida and Arizona would be probably the areas where they do draft high school kids unless they have that kid as a laser focus so if 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 far or dante nori is somebody they have as a laser focus they're traveling there right there's i, yeah. I was mentioning there's a kid lewis i forgot his first name out of nebraska right what competition is he playing against right Not and much. if you're gonna right and if you're gonna you're gonna base that on team usa summer league i i've witnessed a lot of kids in summer league who have fantastic summer leagues but doesn't mean that they're going to you know do that on on the next level so you got to be extremely extremely careful um on on who you draft now if there's a kid like like i said you know and if he's willing to cut a deal the other thing that i I looked at right now from far is uh texas a&m uh he's going to texas a&m I don't know if that's a Yankee kind of pipeline. There's another kid, uh, Ra- Raskin. No, not uh, – he's a shortstop from Tennessee. Not Tennessee, uh, Georgia, that I have him over here. He is a kid who's uh, a switch hitter as well. Let me get to his name. He's a switch hitter as well from um, Georgia that could be a Yankees target in uh, – third fourth or fifth round because he is worried where's he going to college he's going to vanderbilt and vanderbilt vanderbilt oh, here it is rustin rigdon he is from georgia uh he is um a switch hitter as well he has been playing the outfield because he just had tommy john surgery on his shoulder he was probably in the 100 range now dropped maybe down to the 140 to 160 range my point, and I haven't watched him play, so I don't know. Absolutely, but I could I could put two to two together. Where is he looking to go to college, or where is he planning to go to college? Vanderbilt. Who? Did, where was uh, George Lombard planning to go last year? Vanderbilt. Right. Volpe. Where Volpe was too. Volpe got to go? Vanderbilt. Right. So Spencer you, Jones, Vanderbilt. Exactly. So you you could see the common denominator. So that kid, and I I assume he's got a high number if he's going to Vandy. But you don't know that he's also from a small town in Georgia. Has great ability, switch hitter. If there's a number, maybe he goes there. So you look. That's how I put these drafts together: is the common denominator in the player. Is he a Kate player? 
Does he have a connection to one of the schools that the Yankees go to? Does he have the metrics that the Yankees looking for, right? Those are the things. If you put that together, there's a good shot just using common sense that you're going to, you're going to hit on more than a few. Now, is there a kid like a George Lombard that is going to come out of nowhere this year? Because last year when we were looking at Lombard, we were thinking he was going to be a top 10 pick at the beginning of the year. And we didn't think that there was any way he would sign and he signed for slot. Right. I mean, the only one that I could see is, is if the Lindsay kid possibly drops, he's from Florida. I think he's a right hand hitter. Um, What's his first name? Uh, uh, is it Kellen Lindsay? He's at 29. Yeah. He was supposed to be a top 15. Um, if he goes on, the, I, I, from, like I said, I've heard from a few people already that they are, they really like, they like three high school players, Dante Nori, uh, Dickerson from New Jersey and uh, Griffin Burkholder from Virginia. I think that what's good, you know, there's a good possibility that one of those three, are going to be Yankees. And, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if they draft one in the first round and the second round. I think this could be one of those weird years where they're a little gun-shy getting a college bat up that front, get some younger kids, and then maybe come back with some college bats later on. The problem was, and I think Nick alluded to this, is like, you know, you usually draft heavy with your college bats because the college bats past round five or round six, is, it could be kind of questionable. Now, later on in the draft, they usually go pitching. Do you have some names? They usually go. Yeah. College. So, so I mean, if I'm looking for some small, um, I don't want to because it's not small colleges, but some names out of nowhere that you might be called, um, and why? Uh, like I said, Ryan Gallagher from Santa Barbara. Um, he could go anywhere between rounds four and ten. He is a lot, um, uh, I don't want to put him like a Shane Bieber clone, but they were from the same school, Uh, tall, pounds the zone, uh, good control. That's somebody that I could see them focus on. Uh, Nate Knowles from um, William & Mary, from what I've been told, his metrics are like really, really good. The question is, uh, and I just saw that, he is transferring as well. I've got he put himself in a transfer portal. So if he doesn't get drafted too high, he might just go back because that's the thing too, right? Yeah. Right. Do I sign at one fifty, or maybe now go to like LSU, who's going to pay me three hundred, and then take the chance again next year as a senior, knowing even though as a as a senior, I'm going to get probably you know a hundred or less, maybe 50 to 100, but that's 300 or the 400. So that's a questionable thing. Um, that's one name that I said I was looking at. Uh, Ryan Dombrowski, he had a terrible year at Penn. Terrible year, terrible year, but also really, really good metrics. Uh, he's a Jersey kid. Does he um, Does he come, uh, come back to school or not? Uh, here's a name that you could – Texas, Texas, Texas Tech is another place the Yankees seem to really focus on, right? Mm-hmm. In terms of pitching, they have drafted. Uh, they well, they traded for Clayton Beater, Texas Tech guy, right. and they drafted Chase, Chase. Hans, right? Uh, Kyle Robertson it, it didn't have a great year, but there's always questions about the love hate relationship with Texas Tech. Is that it's just like a weird thing. They they have arms, but the arms seem to do better once they turn pro. Mason Molina is another uh, a lefty pitcher who could be anywhere between uh, fifth round. He transferred to Arkansas this year. Had a decent year. Had a better year last last year at Texas Tech. He could be somebody that you know once is in a system and being molded. Um, those are pretty much the ones that I'm really, really um, looking at. And then for the, like some bats, I mean, there are so many bats that they could get in later rounds. One of my sleeper ones, and depending on what they do in the first round and and the second round is Shane key, a Sean keys from Bucknell. 
Um, Sean Keyes is, I mean, to say that he's a Ben Rice clone is an understatement because lefty hitter, um, Patriot <laughs> League is not the Ivy League, but it's pretty close. My wife is a <laughs> former Bucknell graduate, so we say, I say that all the time. Um, <laughs> but Bucknell is, it has a, you know, Christy Matherson, it's Chris Matherson field of Bucknell. Just remember that he went there. Yeah. Um, but he had a great year on the Cape. He was he went listen listen to this. He started the the summer last year in Woodbat League and in, in, in the Hamptons League in Long Island. Goes to the Cape Cod League. I think he hit like 15 home runs. His metrics are phenomenal. Could he play third base? He has the arm. He's a lot. That's every third baseman's issue this year. Can they play third base? Billy Emeka, Tennessee, is that's his problem. I was mentioning Tommy White at LSU, and now with him, uh, Sean Keyes, can they stick at third base? But I think there's you know there's a possibility once uh, uh, Sean Keyes goes pro, he could really take off because he has a great understanding of the strike zone. Nick, do you have some other names that you want to ask about? Hey, there's a there's a guy that I like a lot, man. He's a I would call him a sleeper, uh, Conrad Kaysen. Uh, he's a young, uh, 17 year old kid from Georgia. Um, well, who's your sleeper in this class, man? If you had to say somebody that you think out of nowhere, that's not really connected to anybody. Who's your sleeper kid that you'd be like, I'm going to put my money on him. I, I mean, I, 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 the, a name that came up, uh, that I was looking at, like I said, I'm more college than because I, I do watch a lot of college bas- uh, baseball, right? So I, I know that um, uh, there's a kid from uh, George, Georgetown, Everett Carlett. I think he was on the Cape. Just he touched the Cape a little bit. He could be a seventh, eighth round pick. Uh, Brandon Davis, also a lefty, pitched on the Cape. Um, he's a smaller lefty. Right. Um, but did very well in the key, by the way, last year. Right. So right. He, he's somebody that could get drafted. He went to Oklahoma. Um, those are like really my kind of sleepers because the majority. It really goes back to where a, a scouting department sees that kid. Right. And like I said, and I'll, I'll use. You know, here's another sleeper that I, I really like. Here's a perfect one. I watched a lot of his games and. She just shows you how where my life is, right? When it comes to Friday nights, Friday nights, usually, you know, I'm watching uh, when everybody's asleep, watching a lot of Midwest, West Coast games, right? So on, and then I, I, I don't, I'm not getting paid for this, but here's a plug: if you have an ESPN subscription, <laughs> you can watch a lot of these games, right? Yes, um, you can. Parker Smith from Rice did very well in the Cape. Um, he's probably projected to go anywhere between rounds four and eight. Um, had a, be- I think probably had a better last year than this year. So w- w- how I put a list together is, uh, did they pitch on the keep or do they hit on the keep? And th- put it this way, th- I, you know, and, and, uh, I have this discussion with other people. If their foot was on the keep for one minute, the Yankees know who they are. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because what there, what a lot of people don't know is, uh, you know, and I had friends. I had a friend who was actually a scout. He's now retired, um, and he would say, you know, it's not about just being the batter's back or on the mound. A lot of these Cape kids are being talked to by scouts to see what kind of person they are. Right? Can can they handle certain positions? So say they only have ten at bats on the Cape. That might be enough. Do they have four innings pitched? They can throw four innings, give up 10 runs, and then, you know, you're you're like, well, maybe. But how do they give up those 10 runs, right? How do they handle themselves after those 10 runs? How is their demeanor in the dugout after that? Like, that's what my friend would tell me, right? right. And the Yankees really – because it's a wood bat league, right? Uh, right. The North – what is it? The um, There's also another – where they got Ben Rice from. There's also another Northern League. There's a few Massachusetts, Vermont, um, New Hampshire leagues, or main leagues that they just scout. They really scout the Northeast uh, over the summer of wood bat leagues. And like I said, you have you get a scout that sees a kid in Ben Rice who played very limited 
college baseball, but Fair flourished enough. in the summer leagues. Like he really like look at Ben Rice's summer stats. You could see why they're like, well, there's something there. Right. And you're playing against other high you know, college kids that are doing well. Now, I know that the Yankees have been drafting pitchers with size. You know, we see yeah. Bailey D's, Jack Neely, Zach Messenger. You know, there's a bunch of really tall kids. Are there any big Yeah, tall there's kids? one I, I'm just looking at right now. Um I just want to bring him up. Uh let me just I think he's tall. I don't want to say he's not tall. And then all of a sudden he's like, yeah, he's not really that tall, but there's a kid from Utah, uh, the university of Utah. Yeah. That's why I thought it was. I was right. Uh, Makai a- uh, Ash men, a S H M A N. He's a tall lefty six, seven. Um, this, and he's, he's, you guys like hit it right here. This is a perfect Yankee. I would say a perfect Yankees pick, right? He is six, seven. The junior, 21. His stats for this year, 24 appearances, 26 innings pitched, three walks, 26 strikeouts, 11 saves. He's pitching <laughs> right now on the Cape. What is he doing on the Cape? Three games, eight innings pitched, two walks, 10 Ks, with an ERA of 1.08. Now, if that doesn't scream to me as somebody, he's tor- turning 22 the, towards the end of July. So he's an old 21. But that size, that ability. Now, the question is, do they see him as possibly as a starter? Okay, do they molt, do they try to bring him along as a starter? Or do they, you know, say he could be a dominant lefty reliever, but when can I use that pick? I don't want to waste that pick. So he, he could be somewhere picked between 7 and 13. If, if he's anywhere over 10, he's getting $150,000 and a plane ticket, right? He's, right? he's not getting much more than that. But that kind of fits the mold, right? He he pitched right. there. He's on the Cape. They're watching him. He's got that tall size. It's now the question is, I only have 20 picks. Do I waste one pick on a lefty specialist? Well, we've also seen him take some relievers and turn them into starters. Bailey yeah. D's being one of them mm-hmm. um, yeah. that has really turned out to be something interesting. I don't know if he's what he's going to be at the major league level, but he's looked pretty good at double A starting this year. Right. So, I mean, right now this kid has not, he started two games as a freshman, his sophomore year, he had 34 innings uh, and it was a strictly relief pitcher. And then he was a relief pitcher this year. And like I said, he's just now touching the Cape, um, this uh, spring, so you know that they're watching him. Um, and then you, you, like you say, you know, could I think he's only two hundred and see two hundred? How tall is how much does he weigh? Two twenty. Yeah, he's one hundred and nine. He's a stick. So he's six seven one ninety five. So like you just said, like Bailey D's, Cam Schlitler. Yeah. Do Another I talk? Draft, do I draft him? I mean, last year, give you another example. I don't know. He's probably hurt. The kid they got from uh, Bre- Rose. Brady, Brady Rose. Rose. Yeah. He's got to be hurt because I haven't th- seen him, right? What He came from da- uh, Dallas Baptist, right? He was, um, I think he was a one or two inning pitcher there. He never started. They gave him some innings. Unfortunately, he's hurt this year, but he was also a size guy. I think he was about six four, six five, something like that. I think he was like six five. So this Ashman kid kind of fits that build of what they're, you know, like you were talking about. I'm not yeah. seeing it maybe next year. I may not see it the year after that. But in year three, you know, when he's 24, 25, he could be pitching 100 innings. Right. Similar to but, what they did with Chase Hampton coming in with 56 innings yeah. in college, and they bumped him up to 100 last year. He's mm-hmm. rehabbing, but that's kind of a similar mold. I think I think what you're seeing throughout the board when it comes to college pitching, um, there's very few teams, you know, um, that are having these kids pitch 80, 90, 100 innings. That used to be the norm. You see right. a lot of 40, 50, 60 innings, you know, and um, I know there was there was some talk the other day. I mean, B.A. put out um, – uh, a staff draft 
and uh, the kid from Iowa got picked. Uh, Brody, I don't even know his name. Beck, Beckward, Beckard. Uh, Like he that. is, yeah, he is on number twenty one on MLB. Um, if you look on MLB and you see his grades, fastball seventy, slider seventy, control forty. This kid was all <laughs> over the place. Okay. I think he pitched, I might be wrong, I might be wrong, but I think he pitched like 70 innings. He had like 140 strikeouts around, but I think he had like 40 or 50 walks. Now, the only thing that I think there's a possibility why the Yankees might draft him in the first round is Desi, what's his name, the pitching coach, last name. I know the first name is Desi, but he was a coach there at Iowa five, six years ago. So there could be a connection, right? Okay. So that is something that that's a possibility when you have two grades of 70. Absolutely. And the, one of the things the Yankees teach is command and sequencing. That's what they improved down at the gas station. So that makes all the sense in the world. So if his name is called, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be shocked. I mean, you, what are you going to say? You have a kid who's got two seventy pitches, you know, you give him some time and some development and then you hope that they figure it out. I mean, let, let they have, I, I'll tell you right now, I, unfortunately, he's hurt. We heard about it yesterday, Clayton Beater, right? Clayton right. Beater, they like coming they out of the do. Draft, right? And he had two 65 pitches, the the slider, the slurve, and plus his fastball was very high coming out of Texas Tech. The problem is he could never stay healthy. Right. You know, we're seeing that again right now. That's yeah. why there's questions about him remaining a starter. But Nick, did you have any other names that you wanted to get to? Because I wanted to ask Bobby about the Yankees and the draft and the trade deadline a little bit. Yeah, I got two more names and then we can jump into that. So Jonathan Santucci and Ben Hess. How do you feel? Yeah, about them? Okay, so Santucci's name was definitely connected. Um, it was connected very early this spring. Like I said, that Ben Hess, I haven't heard anything from Alabama, but um, Santucci from Duke. I watched some of his starts. Like, like I remember watching two starts back to back weeks in April. One week I think he had like 13 Ks. The next week he gave up like seven or eight runs. He's I think from if I'm wrong, I think he's from Massachusetts. He's a he's a Massachusetts kid. And he uh I, I knew I, I've heard that he could be a first round pick. Now it's like one of the, I, I would I would call it like a wild card because he could go anywhere from thirty picks thirty to ninety. It's like it's like if a team likes him, they're gonna get him. Um, you know, I I just have that feeling like like I said starting in the beginning. I think they just go back first second. Is it college high school? Is it high school college? Or is it high school high school? I can tell you this right now. I would be totally shocked if it's college college. Totally shocked. Now, moving into what we're seeing with the Yankees now, and I know you've been real big on the trade deadline, and what do you see the Yankees doing? Do you think Labor Torres gets moved? You're one of the guys that I've seen that thinks that that's a possibility. Yeah, I think I think, I think think this deadline reminds me is going to be of like 21, the, dra uh, the deadlines of 21 and 22. I think, you know, Cashman is being aggressive. Like, I, th I put out a tweet the other, like this morning or yesterday. I don't think this is necessarily a, a draft that's going to uh take the depth out of the yankees minor league system i think they have a lot of fringe 40 guys they have a lot of potential rule five guys that they got to mm -hmm. do something with they're going to just trade them uh the problem is that the trade market this year is god awful it really it's is horrible it's horrible and i i understand as a yankee fan you want to see movement i mean there are four there are four bats in my opinion yeah, and the Yankees have to get one of them. They have um, Jazz uh, from Chisholm. from uh, the Marlins, Refran Refranio, uh, right from the um, Renhefo, Renhefo, and um, McMahon and India, uh, Jonathan right. India. So you have four guys, right? They need to get one of them, right? They got it. Yeah, and. The Angels kid <clears throat> is hurt with a wrist, so you don't know how that is. Mm -hmm. um, the, Mar the the Rockies are crazy as can be, and they want to maybe keep him <laughs> and build around him. 
So, and, and they could get these guys. So, I mean, I'm not worried about getting uh, relief pitchers. Cashman's going to, you know, get re relief pitchers. You know, I just think he's going to get two from one team. And I, I, the teams that I've said, I, I've had like scouts telling me they're looking at these players is from the White Sox, the Cardinals, or the Marlins. I mean, it's going to be one of, it's going to be, I think, from one of those three organizations. Right. And, um, and I don't think that's a, a shocking thing. And I don't think no. any of those guys are going to cost tremendous amount of prospect capital, but they need bats. Right. I know bird. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the way I look at it is this like, and Joel Sherman said this the other day, and I, I cannot agree any, you know, much more. <clears throat> We're looking at the Yankees on a snapshot of what they are now. The front office is probably going to, it wants to see the snapshot, what they could be in, Mid August, September. So if you're getting Dominguez back, you're getting Stan back, you're getting Birdie back, then you're also adding maybe one or two more bats. That team plus, you know, Rice. Let's let, let, here's the other thing. Out of the three, Rice, Wells, and Vopi, you're hoping two of them work out for the next five, seven weeks, finds it and blossoms. Right. And then you add the other stuff and then you go, you're hopefully going to September into October, whether you're leading the division or you're one of the wild card teams. Right. So right now they're God awful. Like, oh, they're horrible. You, you can't play Grissom and uh, Grisham and um, DJ LeMayu. Right. My I mean, Jones just, either. Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so so and, and I kind of knew this. I kind of seen I kind of saw the writing on the wall when they were going in, I saw the July schedule. It's like, it's terrible. It's against the AL East. And it's, then they come back and they play the AL, AL East again. And then they play the Mets and the Phillies. Like how bad can that be? But you, when you look at August into September, you know, they're going to be, I think there's trips to like Detroit, Washington. They play St. Louis. Um, they come up to Seattle Eagles. in September. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I saw Yeah. So, so, Pittsburgh. I'm not saying. I mean, they're going to probably get skeins. So you know, you know, that's going to happen, right? Yeah. So, absolutely. <laughs> so, but you know, I I definitely think they need a a, a, for, a second baseman or a third baseman, and I think they do trade Torres. And when when people are like, oh, they you can never trade Gallo. You can never trade Gallo. Well, they traded Gallo and they got a good prospect back, right? Uh, and he's hurt right now, but once again, you still have that control of you know Clayton Beater. Beater in two years, even though he's like 27 years old, could be a dominant middle middle relief pitcher. You don't know that, right? You want to know that now. People want to know what's going on now, what the future is going to be like. You don't know that. No, but they have no to way. have that belief. Right. You got to have that belief in them. Uh, so I definitely think that they are, um, you know, uh, you know, going to move him and hopefully get something in return. Nick, you have anybody? Yeah, I mean, I think I kind of kind of agree with Bobby to a to a sense. I've been calling for Glaber Torres to get traded for about a year now, man. But just because I saw the value of a couple of prospects that they could have got, man, like a fellow named Celestin, I feel like you could have moved him over to uh, the the Mariners at a time and got that because they needed infield help. Or the Dodgers last year before they settled on uh, Med Rosario, uh, you could have went and got Joe Andre Vargas, who I think is is going to be an elite prospect in a couple of years. Uh, and you take a swing at that. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see them going to get two relievers because you aren't accounting for Ian Hamilton coming back. Yeah, you know, you're you also have Jack Neely. You got Scott Efros. You know, a lot of people aren't talking about possibly Lou Trevino is still come, possibly coming back. Trevino. He's already started up. throwing. You know, yeah, I, I don't want to cut you off, but everything you're saying, I I, I agree with you. And I, I was thinking if they get a second one, right, if they get like Tanner, if they get Scott, the second one would be like Declan thrown in. A pitcher who has options. So yeah, he may be not pitching in the major leagues, but at least they have the option to put him back there. But yes, I, I agree with you. Everything you're saying, a hundred percent. Right. And then on top of that, man, I I agree with getting a, a thing. I think you have to cut DJ LeMay. That's gotta happen, man. That 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 story's done and over with. I don't care about you know the chemistry nonsense. That doesn't play for me. If you're not winning, you you get off my team, man. Unless you're making a minimum contract, that's I, I'm not watching you play for three more years doing that. Um, so that's what I would say about DJ LeMahieu. But the problem is Caleb Durbin hasn't shown that he can stay healthy. That's the guy that you're talking about possibly replacing Gleyber Torres. So you're going to have to to spend somewhere. 
My problem is they're going to want for Renjifo or somebody along the lines of Jazz Chisholm. They're going to want a big package. The question I'm looking at is Dominguez isn't going anywhere. Spencer Jones isn't going anywhere. We've already established that. I really don't think when you spend $4 million on an international free agent, we've talked about this in the past and stuff, uh, Dane and, and, and Carlos and myself, um, you you fail with that kid. It doesn't matter. You don't you don't trade that kid, uh, period. You fail with that kid because there's a reason. That kid was the number one kid in his class. You gave him $4 million, and if he fails, you failed on uh, – you let him fail on his own time with the Yankees, and that's on your, that's on your development team, not on your scouting team because they brought you the number one kid – happen on your development team. So at the end of the day, I, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I, I just don't know where you go and you grab from. Are you going with Chase Hampton? Are you going with Everson per, uh, Perea, who's injured, you know, I mean, or Oswald Peraza, who hasn't hit yet in AAA, who I like. I do like him. I'd bring him up and give him a shot at second base. It can't be much worse, you know, especially defensively helps out. But, you know, you're you're asking me on on those three uh, three kids or four kids that we just talked about, you know, who's not going to go for a big package and where does that start? Because I don't I don't really honestly see the Yankees this year trading Roger or Lombard. No, I I, I I agree with you on everything you just said. I mean, the two players would be Refrano and uh, I know they like Ryan um, McMahon. McMahon. And the question is, Ryan McMahon's value right now is in the negative zone because there's so much money attached to him. Right. He's an average. He, let's be honest. In a normal baseball season, he would be a average third baseman would be, you know, somewhere between nine and 16 in the major leagues. Right. Um, they like him. He's a lefty hitter. He could play third base. He could play. So the package for him, you know, I, I said the other day they could offer Roderick. I don't put it this way. They could offer Roderick and Spencer to the Rockies together. And I can see the Rockies saying no, because the Rockies are screwed up, right? That's how that's how silly they are when it comes to that. All right, mm -hmm. um, you know the I mean, Refrenio wouldn't take that much. I mean, maybe Ramirez. I would think maybe Ramirez, maybe Ramirez and Warren. It's not going to. It could be even you know um, a Peraza or a Pereira. I mean, I don't think it's going to be that much. I think that's who you're saying. I I, I don't think they get to those big name international players like uh, Brando or, uh, or areas, unless it's something that is monumental, you know, that's something I don't think jazz. I mean, I put out a trade pack today where you have to include both of you would have to, to get Chisholm. You would have to put both in the package. Are you doing that? No, absolutely not. But here goes the thing about uh, Chisholm, man. Like he, he moved off of second because he had issues there to go to center field and has had issues there. The problem is, man, he's he's a flamboyant player. I don't really feel like he fits the Yankees' personality, kind of what they go for. And, like, I mean, look, a lot of kids look up to him kind of like Soto, man. You got that little, like, waggle, you know, all the Dominican kids and, and, and Venezuelan kids look up to that stuff, you know, and that's that's cool and great, man. People want to be like that. But I feel like he he's not a Soto. He's not an Acuna. He's not somebody that you're looking at. It's generational. It's going to be a can't miss. So would I touch him with a 10-foot pole on, on this team? I, I would leave that. I do think, though, that, like I said, I think that Peraza is your best bet at second base if you're trading Torres. So I would try to keep him out of trade packages right now. I think the Yankees really do need to look at what they do in terms of moving kids up and down because there's a couple of kids there like Jared Serna who have no business still being at high A ball, should have been in double A. And then we could be talking about possibly him performing there and getting to the major league level next year. So you don't have to spend like how, uh, like uh, how Steinbrenner saying, but I feel like the Yankees, man, a lot of that stuff goes back to their developmental team. And this year, our system took a step back. I'm gonna be honest with you. Cause last year we were on the rise and we took a big step back this year. Is ben, here's a question for you. Is Ben Rice playing if Anthony Rizzo is healthy in the major no. league? No, but, but he chance. should be. But he should be, you know, and then you, there's other kids, too, man. Ramirez. Ramirez should be up. I mean, look at uh, Flores that just got promoted. I mean, I love Jesus Rodriguez. Jorbin should be up here. Jorbin should be playing second. I guess this right now. This is a golden. He's another up. kid. He's on the 40, man. It doesn't hurt for him to come up here and play every day. The problem is, and I don't even think it's about starting their clock. I, I don't know what the, 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 I can you know, I, I guess I have I have some little little connections with the Yankees, and I always ask the same questions. What is the reason 
for these players not coming up there. And it's not, I used to hear, well, it starts their clock. I don't think it has anything to do with starting their clock, right? I think it's just more of, of being afraid that they cannot handle the daily grind. Plus, if they stink, their value is gone. Well, keeping them in the minor leagues for six, seven years, what do you think it's doing to their value? Taking it. But that's the thing, man. I, I'm going to be honest with you, and, and me and Carlos kind of had a conversation about this the other day. Like, the, the best the best manager that you can get, in my opinion, the best manager in baseball is Bruce Bochy. And mm-hmm. why he's the best baseball manager in baseball, man, is one, he can win you a championship, but he can also develop your, your young players. And he does it at an elite level. And you've seen that in San Francisco. You've seen that now in Texas. I mean, he's shown that. And the Yankees, the problem is Aaron Boone can be great at, at – at, talking and bsing you and everything else like that but the dude shows us he can win the regular season has no 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 clue what he's doing in the postseason and he hasn't shown any ability to grow or develop players like i'm not going to give him any credit for aaron judge i'm not going to give him credit for that because that's under joe girardi that all happened with girardi and then he got fired after that uh that year but you can't tell me there's not one player you can look at and say yeah aaron boone helped develop that kid and got better you can't there's just there's no way I will say this. I'm a little older than you guys. I've been witnessing. Uh, <laughs> I've been uh, witnessing since, like, in the early 90s, they were forced to. They had to. They had nothing. But once Tory came over here, Tory was notorious not playing young players. And the young players they did, it was due to, like now, due to injury. So you had the Ricky Lede, the Ruben Rivera – Cano came up, I think, in May, right? Cano and uh, Chimin Wong came up at the same time, right? Then, you know, what was the next – who was the next young player after Cano? Right, Gardner. Melky Cabrera. I would say Melky. Probably Melky, which was like three years, and then Gardner, right? But then you had two. And then after them, it was probably Judge, right? Yeah, I mean, Jazz, it was, Judge, yeah, Severino. So you're, you're, going, you're going on three, four years between players, that's longer yep. than that. Probably six, yeah. seven. Yeah, of younger mm-hmm. players. So is that on the manager or is that on the general manager who probably doesn't even trust it? You know, I don't know if he, like I said, I don't, I said so quick, does he trust the development of, of what's down there? I, 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 don't, I don't I don't think it's Cashman. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm willing to give Cashman a pass on this one here because I don't think it's there. I got to give Cashman credit and, and a pass this year because he went and got Juan Soto. He did what you asked him to do. He went and got that big fish that everybody asked him to do. And now people are asking him to go get somebody else to kind of help the team. I, this year, I got to give him a pass. The person you can't give a pass, though, to is, is Aaron Boone. How do you continuously lose games and make excuses and not go out there and do anything to get – this team in a different direction. Plus, I, I would like you to I would like you to say, hey, look, man, like DJ LeMay, who's not playing good. I'm sitting him. I don't care. Fire me. Fire me. I'm sitting this dude. He's not playing. At the end of the day, man, you made enough money that you can you can live your life and your grandkids and your kids could be great. Show me that you you care about this team, man. Show me that you're somebody. You know what, Nick? I, 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 uh, and I'm going to disagree, but I'm going to we're, we're going to have this is a great conversation, by the way, because I talked to Dean about this the other night and I want you I brought this up, right? I know when baseball changed, it, and, and everybody knows where it changed because you've all seen the movie. When you've seen the movie Moneyball, that's when baseball changed. Yeah. The relationship between Billy Bean and Art Howe, you are you are starting this player. And like you just said, you know, how you were saying, I'm not starting this player. He's starting these players. And that's pretty much every manager in the game, maybe except for Bochi. But every manager, any, one, three, any three of us will could take that seat in the dugout. And we're going to be told what to do. It, it, it's just how the game has changed completely different where the manager is going to pick the lineup, pick the players who they're going to play. Now you're getting told by numerous people in that dugout on phones, whatever, this is your lineup because this is what the computer says is the best ability to win. And if you watch that movie, if you see that movie, you see the relationship between a general manager and, and, and a manager who's an old school manager in Art Howe and Billy Bean and saying like, this is how it's going to be. And I really wonder, I have to think because that's how it is. When I, when, when I, I don't know if you guys remember when you were growing up, how many managers used to get fired during the in season, right? Every, it always used to be a lot more managers getting fired in season. Why does nobody get fired now in season? Because what, what am I going to fire them and replace them with somebody just pretty much the same. 
So I'll wait until the end of the year and bring in a new person who's going to listen to me and do that. It's just, it's, it's just a whole, you know, like I said, you could bring up Billy Martin from, you could bring him up. Right. But he is not making DJ LeMay or better player or being, being, you know, taking him out of the lineup because he's going to have somebody upstairs saying I'm paying him X amount of money. He's got to play. That's the unfortunate thing. I agree. Everything you're saying, Nick, I really do. I, I agree with it. It's just what the reality is. They're, they're being forced to play They're You know, Trent Grissom has one gold gloves. I think he's probably has two. So two. they're saying, well, even though he cannot hit a lick, he might make an amazing play in center field. So I'm going to play him every day. You know, the thing with DJ LeMayu is that he's, I think, owed $45 million. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, you think about it. I, I think Michael Kay or somebody else it's brought this up the other day. Think about this. Every every uh, long-term deal they thought they got one over on the player has stunk. It was Hicks. Yeah. Now it's now it's DJ LeMayu. And he also made a great point in terms of center field. Look at the Yankee center fielders, right, who they've had. They had Ellsbury, they went to Hicks, and then they went now to Grissom because I'm not using Judge. Judge is just there, right? Look at that. It, it, it really – like you're, you're going 10 years of an unstable position, and that's also about third base too. Look at, look at third base and to a point first base. Absolutely. I was just going to say first base as well. Since Teixeira, there hasn't been a great bat there. Yeah, it, it, it's it's just it's just like you know try to I'm gonna outsmart you by doing X and it works to a sport like like I've asked a few people right now why are they losing and and the common thing that I'm I'm getting and I I've tweeted this they're just getting out scouted and out get it and out game planned by opposing teams and you could see when it started and how it started started with Dodgers who have good pro scouting right. The Orioles have more talent than scouting, right? But then it went to the Red Sox. Red Sox, even though they're a shit show right now in terms of their ownership, good scouting. You don't think that Cora knew that Trevino couldn't throw a ball? You don't just <laughs> get nine stolen, right? Like, where did that come from? So when you have good teams and smart organizations that can scout well, they'll pick you apart. And right now they're really? in a spiral with injured players. You know, did Matt... Matt uh, Blake become a bum right now. You know, like he, it, it's just that they have to re- now figure it out. And man, I'm, I, I said this last night. There's, I think, nine, 17 more games left to go in this month. They need to go, like, you know, they need to go um, eight and, you know, eight and nine at the worst. But it could, it could be really bad what, what's going to happen over the next you know, 17 or 18 games left in this month. It could, it could be it, it, like, I'm hoping they went tonight. Yeah. But there's, there's two parts that you just said there that I want to, I want to touch up, man. I think it starts before that. It starts with player development in the minor leagues, man. Mm-hmm. That that's been the biggest failure for the New York Yankees going for the last 20 years. Absolutely. And they continue to keep the same people there and whoever's running the system. And it's not just all the GM, whoever's the head guy there that's saying we need to move this kid up or move this kid back or do this. It needs to be fired because that, that immediately right there has shown me that that dude has no idea. I think it's David Adams, if I'm not mistaken. He needs to be gone, bro. David Adams needs to be gone. And then on top of that, you know, uh, Matt Blake, I'll be, I, I, I'm the one dude that does not vouch for this guy. Matt Blake has done a really good job with the bullpen for the most part. I give him credit for that, but show me a starter that he's made better. Uh, period. He hasn't. There's no starter that there he's literally one. had that he's made better. There's nobody. So Matt Blake is very overrated in that aspect where he does not make a team uh, get better in terms of going uh, longevity or any of that different stuff. You know, Marcus Stroman kind of revamped over back in Chicago. He he was a solid. I mean, since Rodon's been here, it's been an absolute joke. It's been it's been terrible. Garrett Cole was Garrett Cole, man. And he's I, honestly, you could say he took a step back uh from his Houston days using spider tech so we're not going to go that far but you know you also had uh um Clark Schmidt who who started uh is pretty much an average pitcher but he hasn't really uh prepped him into this elite pitcher that you know people thought he, looked he could pretty be pretty good this year though and then he started throwing a 4 year RA you know or back to a 4 year RA again with him you know what i'm saying before the injury um i mean i'm looking at Luis Hill Luis Hill always had potential before Luis Hill came up 
he pitched what 20 straight innings without giving up a run that one thing i think he has the record as a rookie yeah you know rookie, you got american it. league rookie record yeah you got luis hill who's whose arm is just unreal he's just too good to to not get people out you know i mean so you're looking at that he really truly hasn't made any pitcher better like i haven't seen him come in and turn an average pitcher to an ace like a lance lynn coming in throwing four down to two era like you just don't see that i think i think he's i think you've seen that when they traded um who did they trade montgomery away right is that he has a certain philosophy so his philosophy is the cleveland guardians philosophy right and i think there was um a story in the athletic about the indians pitching development right and how they're far and beyond everybody else and how blake is one of the disciples from there it's it's a slight you know you you want to pitch for the Yankees, you better throw a slider or a sinker. If not, I'm not listening to you. And I'm going to get to your point where you just said, I see, I guess you guys have seen the, the tweets out there of Rodon in the first inning and then Rodon after. Like, how is this stuff going on for 19 starts? Like, how is this not being figured out? That's the job, like you said. This is where I get a, I'm more pro Matt Blake because I know the, the system that he's from, you know, it's – of you know, of course, you want to see more results with your starting pitchers, but like like you just said, it's been you know twenty years. How many starting pitchers have the Yankees produced? You know, Severino, Monty to a certain degree, right? But it, it, it's it's been a common thing, and I don't know if that's a trusting thing and trusting what you have down there. It goes back to what you were saying about how much the the, the organization and the development. I don't know if necessarily if the organ the minor league is necessarily a feeding ground for trades because I, it, it's more of that than a trust of bringing it out there. That you know the Dodgers were were notoriously known as they groom those players. Like this is over sixty years since the Jackie Robinson's days. They use that minor league system. You know the Yankees haven't. The Yankees have taken those players and made trades with those players traditionally. They got lucky in the nineties with, you know, they got the, the core four, but outside of the core four, there was no core seven or core eight or core nine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They got, four, they got four players, five players when you count Bernie, because he's probably the best. In my opinion, he was one of the top leaders who gets overlooked and should be a hall of famer. Right. You know, you don't usually have that. Um, and they were, but that, the difference is, and I said this before, they were forced to use them back then. Right. They didn't have anything else. It seems right. now they go through the trade route or the free agent route before they use what they have down there. And like you're saying, it is a shame that there are kids who are in low A or high A and being stuck there where they should be pushed a little more. And that goes to my thinking, do they not trust the player to perform out there? But it's not but it's not that. Let me ask you a question. So if you're if you're an international free agent, and, I, and I'm not trying to advocate for them not to sign with the Yankees, God yeah. love the Yankees. But I want you, I want you to think about this for a second. What in in a job, there's two things that piss you off more than anything, right? One, a bad work environment, and two, yeah. crappy pay, right? So mm -hmm. one, the Yank when you're a minor leaguer, you get paid bare bones trash, absolute garbage money. So that already there is rough to live on. You're going through the daily grind every day. You're trying to make ends meet, you know, while you're surviving on this, maybe $150,000 bonus you signed for five years in the minor leagues. Two on top of that, uh, the Yankees never promote anybody. So when you see, I don't know if you watch Instagram or you have, like, when somebody comes up and does something, all the Yankees are like, hell yeah, let's go, man. We're proud of you. But when you don't see that happen as a minor leaguer, I'm going to look at it and say, why am I going to keep going? Why Why am I going to keep pushing? Like Will Warren, for instance, he was a guy that could have possibly been up here for some reason, you know, and been up here. It, it, the dude has been down there throwing what? At least over 130, 140 innings in AAA at this point, man. At some point you say, why am I going to just keep throwing the baseball down here and I'm not going well, anywhere? It was notoriously known that the Yankees keep their players down in the floor. So they're 40. Yeah, for two things. So they have to be put on the 40. That was one. The other one is when they're out of options. It was three things. 40 out of options rule and and um uh, rule five. five. Right. It was gonna be one of like they, they don't they don't even know you. They don't even I mean, like this was 15 years ago. We're talking I remember when Mike I was talking to my friend who was a scout back then, it was when Mike Track got brought up at uh at 20 years old. I said he would be in high A with the Yankees. Who, who, who are you kidding? Maybe double A. 
they, they th those three things have always been an issue. It's it and 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 cash notoriously. You can look at interview in, after interview. It's talking about player control. The difference is today's GMs don't give a shit about player control. They don't. They want to make the right trade. They want to win now. So even though, and I, I'm going to use him as an example. You know, people are crapping on uh, Peraza, right? Mm -hmm. In his mind, Cashman's mind, he's got six years of control, right? At prime age, I think he's still 23, or maybe he's 24, right? Might, so I, I think he turns 24 in September. In September, so I still have that player. So even though his value might be diminished, in my mind, he's still a former top 50 player. He's still not even entering his prime, and he still has six years of control. So if I still keep him down there, that's my like, you know life preserver that's what it was so it's like rule five now he's done do he has done a better job i think in trading those rule five guys because he was losing them i mean he yeah. it was like two years ago he lost three relief pitchers and they all started i mean i started they all got major league rosters the kid from boston the kid in the, with the uh, guardians and there was another one so like you're Perfect. saying you're, you, yeah you're using yeah you're using will warren as a perfect example Right. So Will Warren is not being a, a, a thought because he has to be be put on the 40 man. That's starting. But that's poor. But that's poor management. That, I mean, truthfully, it is. I, I, I don't care. I agree you, with listen, you. I the agree smartest with you. people adapt. They adapt to their <clears> surroundings. <throat> and that's what makes you great. I mean, Greg Popovich, for example, man, yeah. is a heck of a, a heck of an NBA coach. The guy had grown from year to year to year to adapt to stay in this for 25 plus years. At, at an elite level you got to give him a lot of credit that's what i'm trying to say like cashman the one thing i will say about cashman man is he's tremendously shown no growth like that's the one thing that you cannot say he's tremendously shown absolutely no growth and that's what i will say that that is the problem you have 20 plus years and you have one championship under your belt and i feel like it's not i'm not trying to knock hal steinbrenner and i've said this before but i feel like he one he never managed anything. He just got he got lucky because his dad was rich. You know what I'm saying? And he and he 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 lived in a good family. I'm not saying that Hal Steinbrenner doesn't want to win because I'm sure he does in his own way. Of course he does, man. Everybody wants to win. You know, I'm saying that at the end of the day, he has to learn to let go of some of his his troops to to revitalize <laughs> everything. And that's what he he fails to do. And I like the fact that they give you an opportunity to try to dig out, dig out, dig out, dig out, dig out, but I'm tired of Michael Fishman. I'm tired of, of 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 Brian Cashman. I'm tired of of those players there going back and forth, back and forth, and not showing any growth. I mean, Spencer Jones, man, the dude you could argue should be up at AAA right now, man. He could he could be up there too. There, who's who's blocking him from being up there at AAA and getting AAA at bats? Yeah, like everything that you are saying, I I've been saying for years, and. I think what we're probably going to see this year or, you know, there, you know, um, Andy Martino alluded to this too, is that, you know, this is probably going to be um, last go around for Cashman as a general manager. I think he moves, you know, I don't care what anybody tells me. Okay. I do think he has ownership of the team. And what I mean by ownership, like Billy Bean, that he might have half a percent ownership of the Yankees. Where he, when he retires, it gets moved into finance. because if it was anything else, he would have been gone. Like you just said, he's got one one World Series in the past twenty what three years? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Twenty right? four years. Okay, so why is he still here? Uh, I think he probably moves to an executive role. Uh, Kevin Reese takes over. Uh, but this is the problem: is Kevin but Reese? But it gonna, shouldn't be. It but is he be Kevin Reese? Is, exactly. Is Kevin Reese going to be any different than Brian Cashman? The only thing that scares me, though, in terms of of everything, is I like what our international free agent market has done. I do. I, I think Donnie yeah. Rowland has absolutely killed since he moved in. And 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 I'm I I talked to Dane. I talked to Carlos about this. In the next six years, you're arguably talking about the Yankees having five years where they either have the one or two kid in their class. So five out of the next six years, you got one or two. Outside of next year, you have one or two. You have Wandia Siegen coming out in 26. Yeah. You got Myron in 27. 
You just got his brother in 29. And then I, I'm not going to talk about 2030 kid because it's supposed to be hush hush, but he's a top two kid in that yeah. class too. And there's talk that they could even sign the number one kid in 2030 as well. So if you could walk away with two of the top million kids in the world, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, that's an elite thing to have. But the problem is when Cashman goes, you take over, are they going to fire people? That's that's what you got to worry about. Yeah, that's what I, don't, team. I, I don't know, but I don't know if you were recall like the, the, the 2014 international class, right? That was the year they went crazy. Do you remember that one? Yeah. That, yeah. that would, They went really, really nuts. And I don't know if they ever got turned off by it because of what happened. There was not really a lot of players coming out of that class that matured and stuff. But you see, you know, you look in the past – you know they they get the they they are developing and they have the great Dominican summer league and a great Florida State uh, summer this year, but the question I always go to are they getting these players for the team for the future or are they getting them for potential trades? That's that's my thing. It's like I think and 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 that's great because you're getting all these players and stuff. I, it wouldn't surprise me if Hal and Cashman say, "Hey, get every top player on the on the on the international market." I don't care what it costs, just get them. Because for me, it's having as many chips as possible if I have to make that deal. And the Yankees should be doing this. And that's what I brought up, alluded to about, I think, Kylie and ESPN. He wrote that last year about why don't the Yankees just go crazy and just draft players? Like, just go get, in the first five rounds, just drive, get high school kids, right? That whatever, and pay them. And if you you got to lose a pick next year, so be it. You know they just don't. I mean they haven't. That that was a, if you could find that article about it from last year. But they did. They lost. They lost picks and in, in international money for Rodon. <laughs> like no, no, you no, you go back ten spots. This is when you actually lose picks. Like you don't get a first. Yeah, round. you lose two first round picks. I, I know. Yeah. I know. I know that that whole yeah, agreement yeah. thing. I'm just saying you lose picks and 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 everything and go back when you sign a Rodon. I'm gonna tell you right. now. We lost a kid named Davio De Los Santos last That's year money, in the yeah. organization and who looks great. And then if going back to Garrett Cole, you lost Samuel Basalo, who's going to probably come up and beat the Yankees up with the Orioles. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, you can look at yeah. all that stuff. And, and I'm not going to argue against Garrett Cole. I mean, you get Garrett Cole if he's available, right. but – you know, that's that, that's a, a situation you lost them, you know. I, and, and that makes you know, you made a great point right there. You know, what Rodan has looked like, it makes me really wonder when's the next time they're going to sign a qualified free agent because losing the two picks, losing the international money after that. I mean, like you just said, you know, you can't say no to Cole. I get that, right? But the Rodon thing, that was. That was – and I, I like – I mean, like, I, there's no been a bigger Rodon fan in Chicago and San Francisco than myself. But what I'm seeing right now, I'm seeing A.J. Burnett, right? Yeah, That's what I'm looking at. You know what I mean? I'm looking at a guy who just cannot pitch over here. And if if there's uh, – like, you know, we're going back to the first inning nonsense and stuff like this. What, what is not working out between him and Blake? But anyway, the point was you're losing picks and you're losing inter- international free agent money. So – and now going over a hundred, over three hundred million next year, they're ten picks behind, and I think there is some inter, uh, inter, international free agent money that is being lost. But they might got that back through trades. Am I correct or am I wrong? Pirates? They got some money back from the yeah, Pirates, right? In the Kiner oh. Delgado deal. Yeah, so they got some. That's just, that's just going for pitchers right now, and uh, and maybe a shortstop that I know of. Yeah, but it, it it really it really is you know you know you, you they're going over so they're going to be ten spots back next year. So it really it, it goes to to say that you know when people say well how doesn't put up the money you know how much do you go you know yeah. and how many more people how much you gonna go to four hundred million you gonna go to four hundred fifty million you, you know like mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you guys follow soccer right I'm a big right. Manchester United guy I used to coach soccer I'm a big Manchester Manchester United has probably after Madrid the, the highest payroll in the world and they're terrible because they make terrible decisions. Right. In terms of how they they put their their team together. And I see that similarity with the Yankees. It's just like, you know, what's the quick fix? So it's going to be quite interesting what the quick fix is going to be at this trade deadline and what they see as a quick fix, you know, and what comes back from it. But, you know, as I was saying, you know, I'm more my content is this month could get ugly and I will. You know, hopefully after now I might lose my mind on the trade deadline, like at 601, <laughs> I'm just crazy. 
and just say like this is a, a disgrace but we'll see what happens all right bobby we want to thank you so so much for stopping no, by. you guys I... are awesome these are this is great see this is what i, I love talking smart baseball and both you guys are smart baseball fans right and that's <laughs> what it is i mean you know that you get a lot of people who just say a lot of craziness and you, you have to you know you have to see the ebb and flow of a conversation and, and understand that you know um there's methods to be behind people's madness and stuff like that right so yeah. just saying oh i fire this person and stuff like this intellectual discussion is great and you guys are great and it's it's been a pleasure to talk this and hopefully Thank this you. draft coming on sunday night is gonna be a lot of fun we'd sunday love to have you but we'd love to have you back in the next couple of weeks to do a yeah. review of the draft talk about what you think of the picks and all that we'd love to set that up oh that'd be great i'm home for the summer i go back uh teaching in september so please Perfect. we'll get a hold of you yeah thank you guys nick dane thank all you right. so very 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 much have a great evening and go yanks thank you guys take care bye-bye bye guys hit the like and subscribe on the way out for los later guys